Cleopatra, a historical figure who might not have been a conventional beauty with her prominent nose and wide mouth, made up for it with her presence. She was enigmatic, dressing with a sensuality that captured everyone's attention around her, and her skill with makeup was unmatched. However, her personal life was far from an open book, full of scandals and mysteries that still fascinate today. The Queen of the Nile was known for her complex and often controversial relationships. She married her brothers following tradition, but is also famous for her connections with important Roman leaders. Rumors about her ingenious use of bees to create a vibrating pleasure add an exotic touch to her already intriguing biography. When it came to her ability to seduce, Cleopatra was in a league of her own. It's said that she held an impressive record in the Egyptian court for seducing a hundred men in a single night, a testament to her unparalleled skill in the art of conquest. This feat not only reflects the liberal sexual customs of ancient Egypt, but also challenges modern taboos, showing Cleopatra as a woman far ahead of her time in terms of sexual expression and freedom. Today, we're diving into one of history's most intriguing enigmas, Cleopatra. Often portrayed as a stunning beauty, Many wonder if she really captivated men's hearts as skillfully as the legends say. The truth is, Cleopatra didn't just use her intelligence and charm to influence powerful Roman leaders. She also knew how to use her sexuality as a tool of power, proving that her mind was just as attractive as her appearance. And speaking of curiosities that sound straight out of an exotic tale, did you know that Cleopatra might have invented the first vibrator in history? According to historical accounts, she supposedly filled a hollow gourd with angry bees to create a vibrating buzz. Another version of the story suggests she used a papyrus box filled with the same buzzing creatures to achieve pleasure. These stories might seem bizarre, but they shed light on the extremely liberal sexual customs of ancient Egypt, where intimate interactions with animals ranging from dogs to crocodiles weren't uncommon. And it doesn't stop there. The Egyptians were also pioneers in contraceptive methods. They used crocodile dung as a means to prevent pregnancy. So, as we explore the complex figure of Cleopatra today, we'll also take a look at some of ancient Egypt's most peculiar practices. Ready for a trip back in time? Let's go! Today, let's peel back the layers of mystery surrounding Cleopatra, the Queen of the Nile, whose reputation as a seductress has endured through the centuries. Beyond her physical beauty, which included an elegant neck, long black hair, and full lips, Cleopatra knew exactly how to captivate those around her. She used exotic perfumes brought from distant lands to enchant her admirers even more. According to reports, her presence was so magnetic that men would be willing to give their lives for her unrequited love. From a young age at twelve, Cleopatra was already exploring the complexities of love and power. She had a temple where young slaves served her with aphrodisiacs, a place where she honed her seductive skills every day, learning from the most experienced courtesans of Alexandria. Among the Greeks, she was known as Moraine, meaning she who opens wide for 10,000 men. Legend has it that she seduced 100 men in a single night, showcasing an unparalleled ability to use her sensuality as a tool of power. This same skill is believed to have been crucial in winning over figures like Julius Caesar. Join us as we delve deeper into this fascinating historical figure and uncover the secrets of her lasting influence. Cleopatra, one of history's most enigmatic figures, was born into a complex and intriguing family context. Her lineage traces back to Ptolemy XIV Oletz, a Macedonian who took the throne of Egypt in 80 BC. The mystery begins with the identity of her mother, who could have been one of Auletti's concubines or, following a more controversial tradition, his sister-wife, Cleopatra V Tryphena. Marriages between close relatives were common among Egyptian nobility, a strategy to preserve the purity of their royal bloodline. After her father's death, young Cleopatra not only inherited the throne, but also a royal tradition of marrying within the family. She was married to her two younger brothers, one after the other, starting with Ptolemy XIII when he was just about 10 to 12 years old. Cleopatra's cunning quickly showed as she skillfully and swiftly marginalized the young co-regent. She began to rule alone, issuing orders in her own name and placing her iconic image on the kingdom's coins, 
a savvy political move that solidified her power and influence throughout Egypt. Imagine the scene. Three years of internal conflicts, and Cleopatra, the iconic queen of Egypt, is forced into exile by her own brother, Ptolemy XIII. Without losing her spirit, she flees to Syria, and with a mix of charm and cunning, wins over none other than Julius Caesar. Together, they plot a spectacular comeback, which ends with Cleopatra reclaiming the throne after Ptolemy XIII's flight and death. Not long after, she marries another brother, Ptolemy XIV, who had barely entered his teens. They rule together until his death in 44 BC, at which point Cleopatra begins co-ruling with Caesarion, her son with Caesar. But Cleopatra's life wasn't just about politics and power. She knew how to throw a party. Along with her legendary lover, Mark Antony, she founded a group called the Inimitable Livers, a kind of secret society dedicated to excess and extravagance. They lived like there was no tomorrow, hosting parties that became the urban legends of Alexandria. Imagine this, parties that lasted for weeks filled with games, obscene dances, and rituals that might have made even the god of partying, Dionysus, blush. It was all a continuous celebration of life, love, and madness as they ruled Egypt. Cleopatra, with her legendary charm, decided to push the boundaries of power by trying to seduce none other than Herod the Great, the King of Judea, and a powerful ally of Rome. Their encounter happened at a particularly tense moment. Mark Antony, Cleopatra's lover, was away, occupied with conflicts in Armenia. Knowing the existing animosity between Herod and Antony, since lands belonging to Herod had been gifted to her by the Roman, Cleopatra saw an opportunity. Herod, already resentful, was caught off guard by the audacity of the queen. Cleopatra, famous for both her intelligence and beauty, might have had some genuine attraction to the king or, more strategically, was setting a trap, trying to involve him in a scandal of international proportions. The historian Josephus called this encounter a criminal conversation, suggesting the queen's hidden intentions. While she seemed to show genuine interest, the consequences of such a flirtation could be fatal. Perplexed by her advances, Herod was unsure how to handle the situation. In a calculated move, he called a council of close friends to consider whether he should eliminate the seductive threat. The decision was not simple. Killing Cleopatra could provoke Antony's wrath, a risk Herod hesitated to take. The council advised against execution, predicting possible Roman retaliation. Determined but cautious, Herod opted for a diplomatic solution. Instead of following darker impulses, he chose to simply escort Cleopatra back to Egypt, a decision that maintained peace but left tension and rivalry simmering. This choice not only preserved Cleopatra's life, but also the delicate political alliances of the time. Cleopatra and Mark Antony had a romance that was as much a power play as it was a fiery passion. They met under political circumstances, forming an alliance in 41 BC, and soon the romance blossomed. Cleopatra wasn't just a powerful figure in Egypt. She became a significant influence in Antony's life. After starting their affair, Antony spent a season in Alexandria, immersed in Cleopatra's world before briefly returning to Rome for a political marriage with Octavia. However, Cleopatra's pull was stronger, and he returned to Egypt, where the couple ended up having three children. Meanwhile, tensions were escalating in Rome. Antony's relationship with Cleopatra, marked by excesses and blatant disregard for Octavia, the sister of the powerful Octavian, deeply irritated the Roman leader. Octavian, seeing his own power threatened and his sister dishonored, could no longer ignore the challenge Cleopatra posed. The relationship between the two men quickly deteriorated, culminating in 32 BC when Octavian declared war on Cleopatra and effectively stripped Antony of his powers and titles. The stage was set for one of the most dramatic confrontations in ancient history, where personal passions collided with political ambitions, changing the course of the Roman Empire. Cleopatra has always been shrouded in mystery and controversy, especially regarding her appearance. While Roman historians often described her as having almost celestial beauty, the reality might be more complex. The truth about Cleopatra's looks might never be fully known, given the mixed descriptions we've received over time. Coins from that era, for instance, show a woman with striking and distinct features, like a prominent nose and a strong chin. 
This suggests that Cleopatra might have preferred to be portrayed with an image of authority and power, rather than conventional beauty. Contrary to the glamorous image perpetuated by Hollywood, Cleopatra might not have been the stunning seductress many movies and books depict. However, what she may have lacked in traditional beauty, she more than made up for with undeniable charisma and sharp intelligence. Cleopatra knew how to use her personality and intellectual attributes strategically, drawing allies and adversaries into her political and romantic games. Moreover, if Cleopatra had indeed been less attractive, it likely would have been widely commented on by her contemporaries, who were not shy about their criticisms and disparaging remarks. The absence of a barrage of negative comments about her looks suggests that in some way, she managed to impress and seduce those around her, regardless of the aesthetic standards of the time.